Hey everyone, uh, in this episode of our Pinecone Adventures, we're going to be um, going over how you can take one of the many available Pinecone operating systems and image it onto a micro SD card that you can then plug into your Pinephone and boot from. Um, this process is going to be similar for almost every operating system, but for this video we'll be using Ubuntu Touch. Uh, it's pretty popular and I'm actually really excited to give it a test drive in later videos. Today we're going to go ahead and use a, a Unix system, in this case Ghost BSD, to take the image of UB ports, Ubuntu Touch, mobile operating system, put it on an SD card, then put it into our Pine phone, and it should boot with that issue. Um, this is my favorite method, it utilizes uh, DD, which is a command line utility that's uh, very simple, um, but potentially very dangerous, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the process. So I go to the Pinephone wiki, so wiki.pine64.org, and find the Ubuntu Touch operating system. Um, little entry, it's right next to Debian, Posh, Selfish OS, and the other mobile phone operating systems. And we're gonna go ahead and you can click the link right there to go to the Jenkins build server that's publicly available. And here, some important things to look at is we're gonna wanna use, you know, a last stable build or last successful build um, because we don't want to use the failed builds as they've obviously failed. So I'm going to use build number 246, at least about 10 hours ago, and that's the image that we're going to want to use on our Pine phone. So if we click that, we will be taken to a page like this, and here in the build artifacts section, you can see, you know, there's two things to download. Now we're interested in this Ubuntu Touch Pine phone image.gz, which has been gzip. Um, compressed to 1.02 gigs and if you click that link it's going to go ahead and download that compressed image to wherever you would like. Uh, in this case it goes to the downloads folder in my home directory. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. So in this case I've already you know, gone through the decompression process once so we're going to go ahead and just delete that. And if I click the link again, I actually get to save it again. So this, we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this download, but it doesn't take very long. Well, depending on your internet speed, I suppose. And while that's downloading, I'm going to go ahead and give you an idea of, you know, where we're going to save this image. So if I do um, geom disk list, and this is on Ghost BSD, so your mileage may vary based on your distribution of Linux or BSD. Um, I can see right here that I have DA0 as a mass storage device that's 30 gigs, which makes sense. So I'll be saving this image to 32 gig micro SD card, and uh, which will then put into the Pine phone and boot from. So it's it's DA0, and if I do ls dev. DA0, then I can see I do have, you know, DA0 right there in dev slash DA0. This is important because you definitely don't want to copy this image <laughs> over your main hard drive, which this, this will be my, you know, system hard drive, which is a Samsung P50 in my workstation. Um, yeah, you don't want <laughs> to copy the image over your running operating system drive unless you want a corrupt version of, you know, Ubuntu Touch running on your laptop. So it looks like the download's finished. Let's go ahead and check. And it has. So we are going to go ahead and run uh, gunzip, which is really just the gzip with the D flag um, to decompress the compressed image. And it doesn't take too awful long. But if you want to see, you know, if you want to make sure that it's still running, you can go ahead and hit Control T, and it'll get you, you know, some output information. And when it's done, the total size of the uncompressed image is going to be about four gigs. And I say about, I think it's almost exactly four gigabytes. So we're at three, four, 
There we go, four, and it's done. So now I have the uncompressed di disk image in my downloads. There it is, we're going to touch pine phone dot image, and we're going to go ahead and write it to our SD card. So this is the DD command that I use to write the image to my SD card. And we'll step through it a little bit. If you already know how to use it, then you know go ahead and, and kick off your copy now. So sudo just means I need to execute it with um, root privileges. DD is the name of the command. And here we have if. So if equals the path to the source file. Um, I remember this. I used to get it mixed up, if and of. Um, this, in my head, if stands for input file. It might not be <laughs> actually what it stands for, but it works for me, it helps you remember. So we're going to take in pine phone image file, and we're going to output the file to slash dev slash da0. And so da0 is the USB mass media storage device, and it's gonna be located in your dev directory. And this is important right here, this block size. Um, you know, little switch. Um, it just says the, it, it determines the amount, the chunks of data that are written to the disks at a time. Um, if you, right now it's set for 100 meg, megs. Um, if you leave this off, you're gonna be here a while. Uh, I think it defaults to one meg. Um, check your man page, you know, but to figure it, to see what the default is based on your distribution. But um, if you do 100 megs, it's much, much faster. Um, and instead of this taking hours, it'll only take minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and kick that off. And nothing, right? So there's no output. Um, if you haven't used DD before, then this will surprise you, but it doesn't surprise me. Um, once again, control T will actually, you know, give you some feedback on what it's doing right now. Uh, in this case, we have two records in, two records out. Um, records are going to be the block sizes, so, you know, chunks. That's about 200 megs. Um, yeah, and so since this image file is 4 gigabytes, you can expect to go through 40 records. And there we go. So 4 gigabytes transferred in 224 seconds, which is less than four minutes, I think. Um, yeah, and that's why you want to set the block size at 100 megs instead of, you know, one. Um, it goes considerably slower. It's because it has to make so many small reads and writes. If your block size is really small, uh, there's a lot of overhead and it reduces the speed drastically. Um, there was one more thing that I wanted to take a look at while we're here. Um, if you before you run any of these commands, of course, you should always take a quick look at the man page um, for the command. So let's take a look at the DD man page. It's going to give you lists of switches, tell you, for an example, in this case, you know, how the block size works, so it sets input and output block size to n bytes, etc. Um, get familiar <laughs> with what you're going to run before you run it, because ultimately you're responsible for your own system, and you know, you don't want to just copy and paste something that I say and then brick your computer, you'll end up having a bad day. So if you're not familiar with man pages, get familiar with man pages, they'll save you buns. And then it's the same with gzip, gnzip, etc. So. All right, and now that your DD has finished copying the image over to your, well, in this case, your SD card, go ahead and pull it, pop it into your Pine phone, and then reboot it and it should boot from the SD card automatically. So the boot priority from the Pine phone out of the box boots from the SD card first if available, and then if not available, it will boot from the, uh, the installed memory on the device. That way you get to try a whole bunch of operating systems before you commit to writing it to disk. And then in a perfect world, once you find your best operating system, you'll go ahead and then you like uh, the, the I think the best way to write something to the uh, system memory th that I've read so far is to actually log into whatever operating system is running at the time off of the SD card you know download whatever image you want and then actually DD from the SD card to the system memory 
Um, your mileage may vary on that. We'll go ahead and give it a try eventually, without a doubt. I'm um, looking forward to testing a whole bunch of operating systems, but uh, in the meantime, that, that's how you do it. So plug her in, give her a boot, and you should be good to go. Thanks, guys. All right, so today we just went over how to write the operating system image to your micro SD card using, in, in our case, BSD or Linux, essentially. Um, if you guys want to see any other operating systems done specifically, we can take those images and see if they work with the micro SD card in our own setup. Um, or if you just have any other comments or questions that you'd like us to answer, or at least like my input on, um, let us know in the comment section below. We can, uh, I'm pretty responsive and, and I like to think pretty knowledgeable, but if not, maybe you guys can teach me something. So thank you for your time, and don't forget, get up, get out, and live a little. See ya.